About five years ago, I had a very brief but strange encounter with a truck driver at a gas station. My girlfriend at the time and I had decided to try out a new restaurant a few towns over that we heard really good things about. It was about a 45 minute drive away from where we lived, and we lived on the outskirts of a major city, so this 45 minute drive took us to a much more rural and less populated area. We ate a late dinner and probably finished up around 10.30 or 11 p.m. And we were driving her car and as we were leaving the restaurant, I noticed she didn't have enough gas to make it all the way home. So I stopped off the first gas station I could find. I pulled into an empty gas station, into the regular filling station, and I noticed a large 18-wheeler tractor trailer pull up at the diesel fill-up station directly behind me. I remember it being a cold night and I just wanted to fill my tank and get back in the warm car as quickly as possible. As I started to fill up, the trucker behind me, who I hadn't paid any attention to, began speaking to me. Now this was sort of strange to begin with because, at least where I'm from, people don't usually start conversations with strangers at gas stations late at night. I forget exactly what he said, but it was something innocuous. Maybe about the weather? I turned to acknowledge that he was speaking to me while still pumping my gas and responded back in a polite manner. The man took that as an invitation to continue talking to me and continued to make conversation. Humoring the man and just being polite, I made mention of his truck, something along the lines of, nice rig, man, you drive cross country? He responded by saying, oh yes, never in the same place too long, or something like that. But at this point, his tone subtly changed. He sounded more serious than he had been earlier. He then said, every time you cross state lines, there's a new start. I have no idea exactly what he meant by that, but the tone of his voice felt dark when he said it. It was also when I really started to notice something off about this man. It is important to note that there was nothing physically intimidating about him. He was smaller, maybe around 5'7", balding, pudgy, but not fat, and looked to be in his late 40s, early 50s. I'm a large man, and I was in my mid-20s at the time. At no time did I ever feel physically intimidated by him. However, the vibe he gave off could be described as creepy and off-putting. Something about him made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I noticed that as the man talked, he wasn't really talking to me, but almost through me, if that made sense. Like, it didn't matter what I said in response to him. He was just going to continue on his trajectory full force wherever his train of thought was going. I was not giving him my full attention, mostly looking at the pump and sort of giving short, sure and uh-huh type of responses to the man's statements. He never took the hint though and continued to talk full steam ahead about whatever random things popped into his head. The only way I can describe it, just nonsense conversation. Nothing important really stands out, nothing offensive or controversial, just like he was spewing whatever thought popped into his head at the moment. I remember thinking to myself that this was not a normal conversation, and there was something really off about this guy. I can't stress the feeling I got from this man. It's not something I've ever felt before, or since. For lack of better words, his vibe just felt evil. There was no real, tangible reason for me to feel this way, yet I did. Standing near him gave me a pit in my stomach. I stopped responding at all and continued to focus on pumping gas. Probably two to three minutes had gone by at this point. The man is still talking and I'm ready to finish up and I turn to look at the man and I notice something that chills me. My girlfriend had been sitting in the car the entire time using her phone, beat up on the dashboard. The man had his eyes on her the whole time like a predator viewing its prey. The look he had in his eyes was one how I imagine a lion looks at a gazelle or something like that. Just this fixated glare that screamed bad intentions. It was easily the most chilling stare I've ever seen. And at this point, I was done. I put the pump back and started to walk to my car. I turned to the man and said, take it easy, buddy. 
trying to acknowledge that our brief and strange encounter was now over. But he continued to talk, just spewing words into an empty night sky. Full on continuing this conversation that we were no longer having, not even acknowledging that I was leaving. I jumped in the car and drove off as fast as I could. Looking back in the rearview mirror, I could see him standing there under the gas station lights, watching us drive away. It occurred to me that at that point, I never saw the man fill up his truck either. He was parked at the pump the whole time, never once made any attempt to pump gas. My girlfriend asked me what was wrong and I told her how much that guy had weirded me out. She said that she had noticed him in the side view mirror looking at her and it made her very uncomfortable as well. After this encounter, I binged on Wikipedia about reading about serial killers because I had remembered reading about how many serial killers were truckers for a variety of reasons. During my reading, I came across Dennis Rader, or the BTK killer. Now obviously this guy wasn't BTK, as he was already in prison by the time this encounter happened, and he wasn't a trucker, but I kid you not, this guy could have been his clone, looked exactly like him. Same glasses, mustache, hair, body type. I have no idea if he purposely styled this look after him or if it was just a strange coincidence. But that man could have been Raider's long lost brother. I will never know this man's true intentions. If he was really eyeing my girlfriend as a potential victim or was just a lonely, socially awkward trucker craving any conversation at all. But I think it's pretty common that trusting your dud instant is important. Even though we're no longer together, I'm very glad I was with her at the time, and she didn't pull into that gas station alone. This happened a few years ago, in my old one-person flat. I had a strange feeling that something wasn't right for a few days, like I was sure that the food I put back in the fridge was less than what I put back last time. I also found pillows from the couch on the floor, and stuff kinda like that. I lived alone back then, so there wasn't anyone else with access to my flat, or so I thought. Well, one night I woke up around one in the morning, sweating, and even though I didn't remember, I was sure I woke up from a nightmare. Since I was drenched in sweat, I decided to take a shower. So I put my phone up in the bathroom for music, turned on the water, and enjoyed my shower. A few minutes in, I heard the door move. I never close it, but it still never moves. I took a look at the shower curtain and saw a shadow against it. And then a look at my phone confirmed that someone was there, since I could clearly see a reflection in my screen that showed someone standing next to the shower curtain. It took me a lot not to scream and to keep acting like I didn't notice anything while silently taking the shower head off the holding and turning the water all the way to hot. I'm still kind of impressed of that quick thinking. Our water got really hot when you cranked it all the way, and a few seconds later, steam was rising and the water hurt my feet flowing to the drain. I turned around, ripped the shower curtain open, and held the head right at the person behind. It was a woman. She screamed in pain. I whacked her in the face with a shower head and jumped out of the shower and ran to the door, taking the key out of the lock and locking it close behind me. A little later, she started to bang the door, but the door didn't give. Thank God for German quality work, right? I called the cops and went to the kitchen to get my big kitchen knife, just for safety. I felt like my throat was closing up when I saw it missing and realized there's only one place where it could be right now. The police came and arrested the woman, who turned out to have been a former person living in the flat and was evicted for not paying rent. Seems she made a copy of the keys and came into the flat when I was at work and sometimes at night. It's possible that what woke me up in the first place was her. And honestly, I don't even want to think about it. Ever since then, I've always insisted that the locks are changed whenever I move into a new place. I grew up in a really small town, like small to the point where you knew every person, and if you didn't know them personally, 
You knew them because they were someone else's mom, dad, cousin, grandparent, etc. One day when I was about 13, well, I was really young looking, so I probably looked more like 10 at the time. But I was walking down the big hill in our town on my way down to the equestrian center so I could go feed and pet the horses. Now when you walk down the hill, you can either stay on the road, which would make it about a 15 minute walk, or you can cut the hill and go down an incredibly steep hill filled with trees, bushes, etc. to make it closer to a five minute walk. On that day, I had decided to walk the road because I had gotten stunned by bees last time I cut the hill. As I walked down the road, a car pulled up beside me. Hey, can I give you a ride? I turned to look at the person in the car and saw a man in his 50s that I did not recognize. I wanted a ride because I still had quite a walk left, but I didn't know this guy. I thought, nah, better not. Uh, no, thank you, I'm, I'm just gonna walk today. Come on, hop on in, it's hot today. Me feeling more uncomfortable, but trying to be polite. Oh no, that's okay, I just wanna walk today, but thank you. Guy said, no, no, no. Your dad would never forgive me if I let you walk by yourself. Get in. At this point, I was sold and started walking towards his car, ready to hop in. Felt bad I didn't recognize this guy. Oh, you know my dad? He said, yeah, we work together, get in. Me hesitantly, oh, what do you do? He said, work on the turbines with your dad. In the town I'm from, there are three main industries that everyone works in. Forestry, hydro, and railway. My dad was a railway guy, and this man was talking about hydro stuff. Alarm bells start going off in my head. At this point, I start backing away and eyeing the steep hill as an escape route. Oh, uh, I think you have the wrong person. It's okay though, I just wanna walk. He said, no, I know your dad. It's me, Terry. Honestly, it's no problem, get in and I'll take you. At this point, he fully puts the car in park and looks like he's actually gonna step out of the car. And at this point, I'm in full panic and run to the other side of the road, praying he won't take the opportunity to get out of the car and grab me as I cross. As I launch myself down the steep hill, I yell out, it's fine, I'm gonna take the shortcut anyways, just to save face in case my dad actually knows this guy and could potentially tell my dad I was being rude. After I make it to the bottom of the hill, I realized I put myself in the most secluded place possible. Hardly anyone was ever down at the equestrian center. And if this guy wanted to grab me, he would have no problem down there. I hid in the bushes for a solid 20 minutes before resuming my day with the horses and then heading home. I gave my dad a description of this guy, his name, his car, and what he said his job was. And my dad had no clue who this dude was. No idea what his intentions were, but I never saw this man again. When I kept turning down his ride, I got the worst feeling inside my body as he kept pressuring me and driving closer and closer until he parked. I felt like I was in danger, even though I have no idea if I actually was. Although this was a small town, we have one of the only gas stations off the highway in a long stretch of wilderness. So it is possible he was just a random guy from the highway. Guess I'll never know, but it definitely rattled me. If you enjoy Creepy Nights content, let us know. Give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, or in the comments, let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Also, check us out on Instagram for more horrifying content. And if you have any stories of your own, that you would like me to personally narrate, check out our subreddit. Until next time, my friends.